Okay, today, boys and girls, we're going to look at graphing a rational expression. And we're going to do this in two days. Um, the first day is just basically finding the different parts of the graph, and then on tomorrow we'll do the actual graphing. So there are different sec the first there are different things that we have to find when we start graphing a rational expression. So one of the things we have to find is the domain. To find the domain, we look for where the x values um, of the function exist, or it's easier to find where they don't exist. And so to do that, we talked about that earlier, we have to set the denominator equal to zero, and that will tell us our restrictions, because remember the denominator can never be zero. Then we wanna look for our x-intercepts, and our x-intercepts is where the graph crosses the x-axis, and we do that by setting the function equal to zero. Basically, we set the numerator equal to zero. To find the y-intercepts, we look where it crosses the y-axis, and to do that, we set x equals zero, and then we solve for y. Vertical asymptotes are an imaginary line the graph crosses but does not intersect. So we want to factor to find our vertical asymptotes. We want to factor and set the denominator equal to zero. Now, we have to distinguish between a vertical asymptote and a whole. We also factor and set the denominator equal to zero to find the whole, but the whole is a place where it can, um, that factor cancels with the factor in the numerator. So that finds a whole. We also want to remember that we have to write our wholes as ordered pairs. And the last thing we want to find are our horizontal asymptotes. Our horizontal asymptotes are also imaginary line. The graph approaches as x approaches infinity or negative infinity. And there's a little formula that we use to find this here. So if the highest degree in the denominator is, um, is if the highest degree is in the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. So an example for that would be if I had um, um, 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 divided by x cubed plus 4. So my highest degree, the highest degree in the numerator is 2, the highest degree in the denominator is cubed. So because the highest degree in the denominator is higher, this horizontal asymptote would go to 0. If the highest degree is in the numerator, then there is no horizontal asymptote. So that would be the case if I had um, 4x squared plus 3x all over 5x plus 1. My highest degree is in the numerator, so this has no horizontal asymptote. And then finally, if the degree in the top and the degree in the bottom are the same, then we look at the ratio of the exponents. So if I had y equals 3x squared plus 5x minus 1 over, um, let's say, 2 x squared minus 1, then my horizontal asymptote would be 3 halves. Okay? So those are the three conditions to find a horizontal asymptote. Now, don't worry about this because we're going to do some examples. I'm going to show you. We're going to start by finding those first three things, the domain, the x-intercept, and the y-intercept. All right, so in this problem to find the domain, I have to set the denominator equal to 0 or not equal to 0. So I have to say x minus 4 is not equal to 0, and x plus 3 is not equal to 0. So that gives me x is equal to 4, and x is equal to negative 3, not equal to. So my domain, I can say my domain is um, all real numbers except x is equal to 4, and x is equal to negative 3. Now that's one way of writing it. Um, the proper way of writing it would be an interval notation, and I would say it goes from negative infinity to negative 3, but 3 is not included. That's why there's a parenthesis. And it goes from negative 3 to 4. 4 is not included. That's why there's a parenthesis, and then from 4 to infinity. Okay, so that is my domain. Then to find my x-intercept, I'm going to set the numerator equal to 0. So to find my x-intercept, I'm going to say x plus 3 is equal to 0. 
and I get x is equal to negative 3. Now this is a bad example because negative 3 is not in the domain, so actually this has no x-intercept simply because it wasn't in the domain. And then to find the y-intercept, I set all of the x's equal to 0. So to find the y-intercept, I say y is equal to 0 plus 3 over 0 minus 4 and then 0 plus 3, which gives me 3 over negative 12, which is negative 1 fourth. So my y-intercept, we write that as an ordered pair, so my y-intercept would be x is 0 and y is negative 1 fourth. All right, let's see if I did it better this time. My domain this time is x is not equal to, I'm sorry, let me rewrite that. My domain is x minus 2 is not equal to 0, which means x is not equal to 2. So I could say it's all real numbers except, I could if I could spell correctly, let me put it this way, all real numbers except x is not equal to 2, or to write it in interval notation, I will go from negative infinity to 2, parentheses because 2 is not included, and then 2 to infinity. To find my x-intercepts, once again, I set my numerator equal to 0. So to find the x-intercepts, I have x minus 3, is equal to 0, and x plus 1 is equal to 0. So my x-intercepts are x equals 3 and x equals negative 1. And technically, that also could be written as order pairs 3 comma 0 and negative 1 comma 0. All right, to find my y-intercept, I'm going to set the x is equal to 0 again. So I have y is equal to 0 minus negative 3. 0 plus 1 over 0 minus 2, which gives me negative 3 over negative 2, which is 3 halves. So my y-intercept is x is 0 and y is 3 halves. Okay, for this one, to find my domain, I set the denominator not equal to 0. So x is not equal to negative 1. To write that in interval notation, it's negative infinity to negative 1 union, negative 1 to infinity. My x-intercept, I would set my numerator equal to 0. And so I would say 2 equals 0. Well, when is 2 equal to 0? There's never. So this is no x-intercept. And then to find my y-intercept, once again, I would set all my x's equal to 0. So I have 2 over 0 plus 1. So I have y is equal to 2. So my y-intercept is 0, 2. All right, I'm going to pause the video. And I want you to pause the video and do the last one and come back when you're done. All right, boys and girls, welcome back. So to find our domain... Well, this one was probably a little bit more difficult. We had to factor that first. Or you could have said x squared is not equal to 9. But when you did that, you had to remember to take a plus or minus 3. So x is not equal to 3. x is not equal to negative 3. And my domain for that would be negative infinity to negative 3 union negative 3 to 3, union 3 to infinity. Um, setting my x inter um, to find my x-intercept, I once again set my numerator equal to 0. And I get 3x minus 12 equals 0, which is 3x is equal to 12, and x is equal to 4. Again, we can write that as 4, 0. <clears throat> Sorry, to get, find my y-intercepts, I set all the x's equal to 0, so I get y is equal to 3 times 0 minus 12 
over 0 squared minus 9. Both of those are 0, so I get negative 12 over negative 9. And that simplifies to 3, 4 thirds. So my y intercept yeah. would be 4 thirds, 0. By the way, I can hear your voice to improve your Alexa experience. So Alexa decided she wants to talk to us now. But thank you, Alexa, but no. All righty. Now we're going to look for holes, vertical asymptotes, and horizontal asymptotes. <clears throat> so to find the holes, the first thing we want to do is factor. So if we factor this, we get y equals x minus 2 over x minus 2, x plus 2. Now, notice that the x minus 2s cancel. So whatever cancel gives me my hole. So my hole is going to be at x minus 2 equals 0, which x is equal to 2. Now, I said that the holes are an ordered pair. So how do I find that ordered pair? I take the simplified version of this. So when that cancels, I get y equals 1 over x plus 2. And I put 2 in for x. So this is 1 over 2 plus 2, which is 1 fourth. So I have a hole at 2 and 1 fourth. OK? Now my vertical asymptote is what was not the hole. I can't use x minus 2 because that was a hole. So the only part that was not the hole is this. So I'm going to set that part equal to 0. And I get that I have a vertical asymptote at negative 2. My horizontal asymptote, remember I'm going to compare the degrees. So I only take the highest exponent in the top. Let's get a different color. I'm going to take the highest exponent in the top and the highest exponent in the bottom, which is x over x. And since the highest exponent is in the bottom, then my, y, my horizontal asymptote is 0 because the highest exponent is in the denominator. Okay, we're going to do a couple of more of these. I know it's, we're going through a lot, but just, just hold with me. All right, so let's find the hole in the second problem. The first thing we want to do is factor. Well, can I factor any of that? Yeah, nothing factors out. So since nothing cancels out, there are no holes. All right, to find my vertical asymptote, I set my denominator equal to 0. So I get x minus 4 equals 0. And so I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 4. To find my horizontal asymptote, I look at the highest exponent in the top and the highest exponent in the bottom, and they're the same. So I get 3x over x. They're the same. So then my horizontal asymptote is the ratio of these two numbers. So the ratio of this would be y equals 3 over 1, or simply y is just equal to 3. OK, let's do another one. Um, we're going to first factor out the numerator. So we have x plus 5, x minus 5, over x minus 5. So are we going to have a hole? Yes, we have a hole because these cancel. So because these cancel, that makes a hole. So how do I find that hole? Oh, I did the wrong thing I was trying to do. I was wondering why that didn't look like a highlight. But that's x minus 5, so I'm going to take x minus 5 and set it equal to 0, and I get x equals 5. And to find the y-coordinate, I have to look at just this part. So I get y is equal to x, I'm sorry, I get y is equal to 5 plus 5, it's 10, so I have a hole at 5 comma 10. Vertical asymptote. Well, because the x minus 5 cancel and there was nothing else in the denominator, there is no vertical asymptote. And then finally, to find my horizontal asymptote, I go back to the original equation, and I have to look at x squared over x. Now, my high, this has a degree of 2, 
This has a degree of one. Since my highest degree is in the numerator, it has no horizontal asymptote. Okay? Now, I know I've given you a lot, but pause it, look at what we've done, pause the video, and see if you can't do the next two, and then we'll come right back. All righty, we're back, and that should have been an X. I apologize about that. I just saw that. That should have been an X. Hopefully, by the time you get this, it'll be an X on your paper. All right, so how do we find the whole? Well, it's already factored. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's already factored, so there's nothing that's making a whole because there's no factor that's canceling out, so there are no holes. To find that vertical asymptote, and you may have done this differently since yours looked differently, but it's okay. So x plus 4 equals 0, which is x is equal to negative 4, and x minus 3 is equal to 0, so we get x equals 3. Those are my vertical asymptotes. Now, finding my horizontal asymptote was a little bit different for this one. We know that if we were to multiply this out, we would end up with 2x squared. And if I were to multiply out the bottom, I would end up with x squared. So that's what I'm going to compare. I'm going to compare the ratio of those two, and I get that I have a horizontal asymptote of 2. Okay? And then this one, it's already factored again, and so we see that those x's are canceling each other out, so the x's make a whole. So where's that whole x equals 0? How did I find the value of that? I take the factored form, which would be negative 1 over x minus 1, and I put in 0, and I get um, negative 1 over 0 minus 1, which is negative 1 over negative 1. So I have a whole at 0 comma 1. Vertical asymptote. Um, I, on the top, I have x, but if I were to multiply this out, I'm going to get x squared minus x. So I have to compare, I'm sorry, vertical asymptote, I did that wrong. So I have to compare x to x squared because the highest is on the bottom. My horizontal asymptote is 0. And then to find my vertical asymptote, I would just set... Since I've already canceled out the x, my vertical asymptote would just be x minus 1 equals 0, which I get x equals 1. Okay? So I know that covered a lot, and we will cover this again um, when we do the graphing part. So come back, and we'll do the graphing, and we'll put it all together.